Hi there, this is Jeanette from Whimsy Stamps. Thanks for joining me. I have a masculine themed card for a change today to share with you. It features this beautiful image. This is the Great Horned Owl from Dove Art Studios for Whimsy Stamps. And um, I decided I was going to try to make a masculine card and this is what I came up with. So I'm just removing that um, rubber mat from inside my Misty because the stamp is actually rubber. Um, with foam mounting on it so it would be too um, too thick to use with the mat so I removed the mat I'm inking up some Bristol Strathmore cardstock and I'm using archival ink um, this is the black one and I'm just stamping it a few times to get a really nice impression of the owl and then I'm using my little um, wipe here that I bought it's like a little chamois and it's it's working quite well I like it now I'm just covering up the little area, the white area of his face, as well as the white area on his belly, because I'm going to be stamping something over it. And I didn't want to really mask the whole thing. I was being a, a little lazy. Um, and this worked beautifully. So I'm just moving the magnets out of the way. I put some post-it tape on the sides, and I'm using this beautiful background stamp. I th think this is called Shiplat or Shiplap. Um, anyways, I'll have a link for it below. It is beautiful. I love background stamps. Just inking it up with some light brown ink and you can see um, how beautiful that is. I'm going to wipe that off. And when I remove the um, post-it or the eclipse paper that I used, you can see that it didn't stamp on the white part of the owl and it was a nice quick trick, um, an easy way to fix it. Next I'm going to use one of these new envelope edger dies. They come in a set of four just to create a different sort of unique type of um, um, cut to the, I guess, the, the top of the card. Um, and I'm going to take that same ink that I used to stamp the background stamp. I'm going to use that to softly ink up the edges all around and I did extend a little bit into like the white areas in the upper corners there just just to soften everything up I'm going to clean that up and now we're going to get to the coloration so I am going to be using zig um, markers so here are all the markers that I used and I'm going to take you through um, how I applied them so this first color is the um, oatmeal color and you can see I'm just you know I really wasn't sure what I was doing here um, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone so I decided I wanted to add that just to the chest and face area and keeping it really soft um, every time my paintbrush goes off the screen I'm dabbing it on a paper towel to remove some of the excess ink so I soften that all up. I'm going to do the same thing up around his face area. And from there I started getting more of an idea of what I was going to do. So once that was all sort of blended away, I took the same marker and I started drawing just some feathery lines um, with the tip of the marker here I colored it in a little bit more sort of following where the shading was on the image I traced the contour of his body as well as the top part there of his head and then I will just blend that all out and you can see how well this paper works with these markers until I um, started using this paper with these markers. I wasn't blown away by them. Now that I use this paper with them, I just love the results. So here you can see it's all nicely blended. I'm just going to do the um, feet now. I'm using the brown and then I'm going over it with the yellow color here. And that just really changes it up and it makes it look more um, like you would see the, the claws or the talons of a bird. So I'm just softening that up, blending it all out. And that gave a chance to the rest of the owl to dry. Now I'm going in with the brown marker 
and again just sort of following all of the lines um, of the feathers just to sort of mark them um, and make them stand out a little bit more. I'm going to blend that area. And because there is so much sort of detail on these stamps, it really helps you establish where you want your darker um, shades to be and where you want your lighter ones to be. So now I'm just using the point of the marker and just using like a feathering technique. I'm just drawing strokes up and down along the wings and along this part of his body just trying to make them stand out from the rest of the area. I'm going to work down in this area as well, up along the side of his head. And like I said before, I you know, this was a first for me, um, coloring an image like this, so I was just sort of taking it as it came and, and working with how it was looking. Um, I didn't really have a clear plan of what I was going to do to color the image. Going in now with the oatmeal, just blending out that brown color with the oatmeal. I'm not using any water, I'm just using the actual marker to blend the color. And soften up where all those lines are drawn. going to work on the tree now again using the I think this is the dark oatmeal color so basically tracing underneath um, where his claws are and then along the other underside and then just blending it with the light oatmeal just filling it in with the same two colors then I will take my paintbrush with a little bit of water and com continue blending it all out. I decided I wanted a little, like not a pop of color, not something really bright, but I wanted something other than the browns and the yellows I was using. So I decided to color all the sort of edges of these branches green. And that just gives a nice um, little hint of another color. So again, I'm just using the tip of the brush to draw the fine lines. This is why I like these markers so much. I mean, they can be so precise, yet they can lay such a tremendous amount of color down. Coloring just the eyes with a little bit of yellow. And then taking my Copic Multiliner here, once everything was dry, and just tracing um, the little claw marks and the pupils of his eyes just to make them a little bit darker and deeper so they will stand out. This is a new pen that I've started using to add my white highlights. I was using the sharper Sharpie poster paint pens but I find they get messy and I'm trying this one out. It's the Uni Posca um, a white marker or white pen and so far it has been tremendous. I really, really love it. So I'm just adding some white dot details on his body and highlighting his eyes with it. And um, I find it works fantastic. I'll let you know um, moving forward as I use it more how I find it, but so far I've been loving it. So now we are going to add a sentiment and this is from a, another whimsy, um, set. This is a clear stamp set. I think it's called Farmhouse. In any event, it'll be linked below. And I'm just stamping birthday. That's nice and simple. It's a beautiful font that um, they used, so I think it looks perfect. It's just enough. It's fancy enough, but it's still plain, if you know what I mean. And now I'm just going to pop this right on top of a standard A2 sized card base that I created with some brown cardstock. Just gonna get that adhered straight. And my masculine themed birthday card is done. Thanks so much for watching me. A full list of supplies will be found below this video on YouTube or you can check out my blog, see some additional pictures. Thanks so much for watching.